Hey guys, happy Wednesday morning to everybody. Well, I guess if you're over in, you know, the UK, <laughs> it's afternoon. Anyways, happy Wednesday. Here I've got little Miss Monroe in her docketot. She's just hanging out with me today. It is yet another dreary, like torrential downpour raining type of weather we're having here today. We haven't had this much rain and I can't even remember how long, it's just crazy. So hopefully by tomorrow or later tonight, early tomorrow morning, it will clear up and I think tomorrow's gonna be like a partly sunny type of day. So maybe perhaps I won't be so flooded with all this wetness around me in my area, but all well. We do need the rain because it has been dry here for quite some time, but anyways. I'm over it. I'm ready for some nicer weather to show up, <laughs> at least before my week is up of being home and on vacation. Yeah, but little Monroe is thoroughly enjoying hanging out in her docketot. She is, I did change her out of her pajamas, her little sleeper, um, and she's wearing a jacquardy onesie with a nice little pretty collar, and then just, um, what brand are these? Just a pair of knitted, lightweight knitted leggings. Um, Cause we have it pretty cool in our house, even though it's pretty humid outside. It's certainly not super hot. It's definitely just super humid and just kind of gross stickiness outside. But in here, it's definitely not that, that way. So I'm just keeping her kind of covered. And I tried on a size three month onesie because I, when I was trying to put the one month, I have, I have these basic, onesies from Jacquardy in, you know, both one month and three month sizes because I've had larger babies. And when I had my Romy baby, Abigail, I purchased a bunch of these in the three month size because she was a bigger baby. And I was struggling to get the one month size on her because it buttons down the back, but it only has two buttons, two snaps on the back. So it doesn't open up very wide for her, like, especially if you're pulling it up from the bottom. And that's how I usually dress my babies. I don't pull them over their heads because I don't want to like pull out their hair and stuff like that. So I'm finding the one month size was just too much of a struggle. So I just went ahead and I put the three month size on her. And for the onesies, because she's bigger around, and thicker in the bottom and just she's just a thicker baby through here. I'm finding I like the three month size onesies on her really, really a lot. I think it's a better fit for her. But the rompers in the one month size, especially because they're more on the bloomy side, they still fit her fine. But I think I'm gonna stick with the three month size uh, onesies for her, at least in the Jacquardy brand. But um, these are actually a newborn size knitted legging but because they're so, um, they're lightweight and they're knit, they stretch and give quite a bit. So I think that anything larger than this wouldn't be necessary. But for the more fitted type of pants, I think I would go up a size for sure, at least to one month or even maybe a three month, depending on the brand and how the leggings seem to fit. It really just depends. Sizing is tricky with these babies. But um, I just wanted to pop in and just say a hello. And I wanted to talk about a quick little quick little topic. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing it up is, uh, okay, so the topic is doll flipping. So there's quite the negative annotation associated with being called the doll flipper, which I was accused of being a doll flipper by another YouTuber. And a lot of people reached out to me and were, you know, really upset about the fact that anybody that knows me knows that I don't just buy dolls to sell them. It's just kind of silly. It, it was such a silly accusation being made that I had to laugh about it because it's just not even the case. Anybody that watches my channel would know that in order to be a doll flipper, you have to like buy a lot of dolls and turn around and sell them immediately. I have been in the... <laughs> the buying of dolls that I love, holding on to them until I find yet another doll that I love and then I will sell and part with the one I have because they're a very, ex because I buy expensive dolls. It's just not in my budget and I'm not comfortable with having multiple high quality 
very expensive silicones in my in my nursery. It's just what I've learned over the years. I'm just not comfortable with it. And I have way too much going on in my personal life with my family and my household and other bills that come way before dolls ever will. So, but but it, I digress a little bit because me, take me out of the equation and I want to discuss the fact of why is it such a negative... Um, why is it such a negative thing in our doll community to be a doll flipper? So even though I'm not a doll flipper and generally I do not make money on sales of the dolls that I receive, when I do sell them, first of all, nobody forces anybody to buy a doll. And also in that equation is part of being a doll flipper is buying a doll for cheap, turning around and selling it for a profit. So. No one's on the flip side of that. No one's, no one's forcing anybody to buy my dolls at the prices that I set for them, and also nobody is forced to sell a doll to me. So if someone is selling a doll, and if it's for a cheaper price than the doll initially sold for, that's up to the seller to be okay with selling the doll to any other collector at any price. Nobody forces anyone's hand into selling a doll if they don't want to do it. Usually, people sell and drop prices on their dolls because they're sometimes in a financial crunch and they just want to recoup some money back. Um, I have only on a couple of occasions been able to buy a doll for less than it was valued at and perhaps turned around and sold the doll thereafter for at least the price that, that I bought the doll for or maybe slightly more depending on the situation. But there's such a negative thing associated with a lot of collectors that think that if you turn a profit on a doll when you resell it, that it's such a terrible thing. I don't quite understand that. I guess maybe for me, I don't care what people buy and sell their dolls for. If I want a doll bad enough, I'm going to pay whatever price I'm comfortable with in order to get the doll home. That's just how I've always been as a collector. And if I turn around and see, if I sell a doll to somebody and I see them sell on the doll, which happens all the time, by the way, if they're able to get back more money than what I sold the doll for, kudos to them. I don't think it's a negative thing in any way, shape, or form. All too often, it's like we're okay if other collectors, we see other collectors constantly losing money and complaining about losing money and we're like, oh, well, that's fine. But then you see someone turn a profit and oh my gosh, they're like the worst person in the world, or oh my gosh, how dare they actually turn a profit. I don't understand that type of thinking. And maybe I'm in the minority here, but it's nobody's business, but each collector to what they wanna buy and sell, whether they make a profit or not, whether they take a loss or not. It's not up to us, the rest of the collecting world of dolls, to police them, so to speak. And I feel like certain collectors out there shame, make people feel bad, talk very badly about if they ever hear of people they don't like especially turning a profit or thinking they get too much for a doll or they're asking too much for a doll. That's the most silly thing I've ever heard of. I have been in this, this world of doll collecting for years and years and years. And I've seen this happen time and time again where people will go through phases of passing judgment when people list dolls for sale and they think, oh, they're asking too much money. Well, no one's holding their head, the, the gun to their head saying you have to buy it. If you don't agree with the price of a doll, move on. Nobody needs to speak up about what people are buying and selling their dolls for. I see people selling dolls all the time that I wouldn't pay that price for them, but do I speak ill of them? Do I rant in a YouTube video about them? No, because it's not my business. And I don't know why suddenly certain people have to feel like they have to police the community. The doll community is the doll community. People will buy and sell for whatever they want. Just like a Romy doll can sell on the secondary market for far more than the doll ever sold for initially from directly from the artist because they're in demand. It's a supply and demand, guys. Let's face it, people get a little too hung up in other people's business in doll collecting. I've never seen anything like it. It is this particular hobby that I see that people, it's the most I've seen people among us, other doll collectors, shun and make others feel bad within the community by other doll collectors. 
I say be happy for people. If you can turn a profit and you don't lose your ass on every doll sale that you have, good for you. I say kudos to you because nine times out of 10, most of us lose money on doll sales. And that's been the case for me across the board over the years. It has totally been the case. So if someone wants to be a doll flipper and they're successful at it, good for them. Because all too often, we do not make a profit on resales. We just don't. It's just not the case unless a doll is very sought after and you happen to be a lucky person that actually has a doll that everybody wants, then you can raise the price. Nobody forces another collector to buy at that price. So for those out there that feel like they need to police everybody else in the doll community, they don't need policing. The negative constant putting people down for making money on dolls, that should be policed. In my opinion, that's how I feel. And like I said, I might be in the minority here, but I'm never going to pass judgment on another collector who sells or buys any amount of dolls. Dolls in this, let's face it, it's a hobby. We would be not helping out the artists if we didn't you know, turn over our dolls, because I certainly, I don't have the room to keep several dolls. I don't have the comfort of wanting to keep that larger number of dolls in my collection. So therefore, I'm gonna have a turnover of dolls in my, in my nursery. It doesn't happen on a regular basis. As you guys have seen, anybody that's watched my channel for any length of time, you will see that I hold on to my dolls lately for quite a period of time because I'm very happy with them. But if I wanted to have a doll coming in every week and a doll going out the following week, that's my prerogative. It's my business. It's what I want. It's whatever I feel comfortable with. I'm the collector. I'm the one that has to be happy with my collection. So who is it for anybody else to tell me how to collect or whether I can or can't have dolls coming and going from my nursery? So that's me on my soapbox. I just don't understand it and I never will. But just know that... On the flip side of that, I'm never going to judge anybody else for doing that. I say, you know, people doing different things and diversity of how people do things on their channels and or in their collections is what makes the world go round. We're, all, we're not all the same, but we don't need people out there putting others down for perhaps having a high turnover of dolls in their collection. There's nothing wrong with that. It's all part of collecting. It's all part of this being a hobby. These are not real babies. You know, we can fall in love with them and the next day see something else we really love and fall out of love with the one we really adored the day before. We're very finicky. It's just the hobby in itself and collectors on a whole can change their mind at the drop of a hat because there's so many new beautiful things coming out that tempt us that, you know, that's the fun. I think for a lot of us is the chase and the thrill of finding the next new baby. Um, I've gotten to a point where I'm fairly content with my collection and pretty happy, but tomorrow that might change. But certainly let's not judge one another for it. Let's just kind of go with the flow and enjoy the fact that there's always something new to share. And I think as a community, on the whole, I think the majority of us are very supportive people. And I think that we need to see more of that. It would be great to see people just um, sharing their babies in their videos and being a little more kind to everyone around us. I don't think we need the negativity in the world around us. It's everywhere else. Let's not have it in the doll, the doll community as well. But... Um, yeah, I just, I don't, I guess I'll never understand. I'll, I'll wrap this up by saying I, I just don't understand why there would be anything negative associated with being called a doll flipper, whatever. It's, it's, it is what it is. People will do what they will do. They, you know, can like it, dislike it, whatever makes you comfortable. But as, as a collector, as a fellow collector, I'm never going to judge. And nor do I think, nor should anybody be judging me, I suppose. But yeah. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. I hope y'all are having a great Wednesday, and Monroe and I will see you all very soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.